This strange story has been described in John L. Guerra's book, Strange Craft. The book is about a military officer, George Fellow, and according to the book, the incident occurred in the early hours of January 18, 1978, in Fort Disk. According to the 85-year-old officer, several UFOs were found hovering over McGuire Air Force Base in Fort Disk, New York. One day, one officer was driving in a police pickup truck through a distant part of the base trying to follow a mysterious low-flying object that was observed around 2 a.m. After traveling for two hours, he realized that the object he was pursuing was actually directly above him, creating a blue-green glow. But soon the object crashed and the next thing he saw was a thin creature of 1.2 meter height with grey skin and a large head. The military officer tried to stop the alien, but it did not understand him. And then the officer shot the creature five times with 0.45 caliber military issued handgun. The alien scrambled and either climbed over or crawled under the fence and separated the two bases. Later, the creature succumbed to her injuries and gave off a foul ammonia like smell. At 4 am, George Filler arrived at the base where the guards checked him and then the surgeon took him aside and said, that an alien was shot and is dead on the runway. Filler thought that the surgeon was talking about some Mexican and so he asked but to his surprise, it wasn't human. Surgeon told him that the creature was from outer space and asked him to send a special cleaning team to the scene, but the alien had already been dead and the body was taken to Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio. According to George Fellow, whenever such a UFO incident used to happen, Wright Patterson always attended the site because it was involved in the Project Blue Book operation. After all the procedures, Fellow requested photographs and eyewitness accounts for the report, but he was denied access to them, stating it is a top secret. Emery Smith is one of the greatest Air Force field medics of all time, and he claims to have autopsied about 3,000 different types of ET humanoids. Emery Smith went through junior military programs in high school and after that, he joined the U.S. Air Force. He has also worked as a terrorist negotiator, flight medical expert, a biotech warfare specialist and in different other professions. We don't exactly know the reasons, but in one of his interviews, he spoke about all his experiments. Emery provided detailed accounts of autopsying over 3,000 alien specimens and over 1,200 nearly complete bodies, and because of these experiments, they are gaining new intel about the massive number of alien species we share our universe with. He also made some other incredible revelations, including that ET flying saucers are mostly organic and linked to the driver and they can be infused with life and intelligence and can change shape. As working at an ultra-secret section of the huge Kirkland Air Force Base in New Mexico, Smith found that a lot of the craft are made up of organic material, which means only the driver of that race can operate the vehicle due to their frequency of the genetic DNA and the frequency that they are emitting. He goes on to claim to having worked on a number of different types of flying saucers, which he claims are constantly emitting an amazing energy from space some 30 years after being captured. There's also other craft that are interdimensional and can change shape. So, they might come in the form of light and they can manifest and change their atomic structure to become a solid. These types of crafts are a little bit more advanced than the crafts that we hear about on news and on TV. High-profile hacker Gary McKinnon claims to have some interesting information about the US Navy's intergalactic adventures. 20 years ago, the United States was confronted with the largest hacking of military computers in history. And to everybody's surprise, the brain behind this large-scale hacking was of a humble autistic Scottish hacker, Gary McKinnon. 
The purpose behind the hacking was not to gain money or fame. The hacker was just looking for information about the extraterrestrials. Gary Nakanen is a UFO fanatic and computer expert whose hacking into the US Navy and NASA systems was labeled the biggest military computer hack of all time. Nakanen claimed that security was so lax, he didn't expect to get caught. He used a program called Land Search to scan documents and files to look up for UFO cover-ups, and he did so undetected for two years before the game was out. In two years, McKinnon claims to have found about Building 8 at Johnson Space Center, where there is someone whose job is only to airbrush UFOs from images since they are so commonly captured. He further found a U.S. Navy spreadsheet entitled Non-Terrestrian Officers. McKinnon admits these words can be interpreted in various ways, but one thing he is sure about is that they are not based on Earth. McKinnon says there were maybe 25 rows on the Excel spreadsheet with officers' ranks and names and that the ships had the prefix USS, just like American sea vessels. He also claims of evidence of material transfer between ships, of which he guesses there are possibly 8 to 10. McKinnon says all of this points to evidence that the USC has warships in space. When the information about this hack reached the U.S. authorities, they demanded for more than 10 years extradition of McKinnon from the U.K. to the U.S. in order to try him and imprison him. In 2012, a leading researcher of Oxford University claimed that aliens are already on Earth and they are reproducing with humans to create a super species. He also claimed that there is a strong correlation between extraterrestrial abductions and changes in the Earth's climate. Yogai Shi, who is an instructor in Korean at Oxford's Oriental Institute, conducted a lecture in 2012 called Alien Abduction and the Environmental Crisis, justifying his theory about the world of the unseen. According to him, human civilization is coming to an end, and the aliens among us could sense this. These aliens came on Earth not for the sake of us, but for the sake of them, their survival. So to save the entire biosphere, they started meddling in our affairs. They are all conducting some kind of biological experiment, including the production of a hybrid. Extraterrestrials are breeding with human beings to produce a super species, which could one day save the planet from climate change and other catastrophes like nuclear war. According to Dr. Shee, Abductions are reported from everywhere – UK, US, Germany, France, Japan and Korea – with significant commonalities between them. But the aliens don't want to colonize the Earth because if they really wanted to colonize the Earth, they should have started many centuries earlier. It may be more or less assumed that the hybrid project is a response to impending demise of human civilization. He said the primary purpose of abduction is to produce hybrids and these hybrids supposedly are indistinguishable from humans, particularly when they blend into society. Dr. Chi also wrote a book on the subject entitled Extraterrestrial Visits and the End of Humankind, in which he states that there are four types of alien civilizations currently living on Earth, including a variety that is small, tall and bold, scaly with snake eyes and insect-like. He said the insect-like creatures are likely to be leaders and give instructions to the other types. In his book, he also explains how aliens thrive in their own biosystem, but we cannot see them as we are limited by the functionality of our organs. Back in 1997, a former U.S. Army Colonel, Philip James Corso, released a book with the name The Day After Roosevelt that even today seems like a real bomb and from which later a huge number of different conspiracy theories came out. Colonel Philip Corso was former head of the Foreign Technology Desk for United States Army Research and Development. He has served in the U.S. Army from 1942 to 1963. Back in 1997, he released a book The Day After Roosevelt which immediately became a sensation among ufologists and people who believed that Roosevelt crash was a reality. 
In his book, Corso claimed that he personally directed the department that guarded and studied the wreckage of a UFO that fell in Roseville in 1947 and revealed many secrets and mysteries of this event. He assured that many breakthrough technical inventions that appeared in the following decades, such as optical fiber, transistors, night vision devices, and computer chips, were a direct result of the study of alien technologies used in the crashed UFO. In the day after Roseville, Corso described not only the wreckage of a UFO, but also talked about those alien bodies that were found in a fallen object. According to him, grey aliens were not really aliens, but bio-robots which are especially created by someone to work on other planets. No one had ever seen real aliens at all, and all eyewitnesses or kidnapped persons were confronted only with big-headed and black-eyed bio-machines. To prove this, Corso described what he saw at the autopsy of the bodies of these greys. They did not have any digestive system, while their bodies were electronically connected with the controls of the spacecraft. They are more like extraterrestrial biological objects or as indicated in autopsy reports, they are humanoid robots, which are life forms specially designed for traveling long distances in space and time. Although doctors could not understand how their body works in terms of chemistry, they found that it did not contain any basic elements unknown to people. Of particular interest was the liquid that served in their place of blood. During the Apollo 15 mission to the moon, an unidentified man-made object was discovered and photographed on the lunar surface. The object was a spaceship measuring 3317 to 510 meters and estimated to be approximately 1.5 million years old. According to official records, 17 missions were launched between 1961 and 1975, of which 11 were manned, resulting in six successful landings on the lunar surface. The Apollo 18, 19 and 20 missions were ultimately cancelled due to their high cost and lack of perceived scientific value. However, in 2007, Italian freelance journalist Luca Scantamberlo conducted a written interview with William Rulich, who claimed to have been a member of the secret Apollo 20 mission. Before that, he worked for Bell Laboratories and served in the U.S. Air Force. According to him, during the Apollo 15 mission to the moon, an unidentified alien spacecraft was discovered and photographed on its surface. Further photographs and videos of the spacecraft were taken during missions 16 and 17. Relit says that mission 18 and 19 encountered several problems and lost research data. And so after that, the Apollo 20 mission was launched in 1976 with Rennich, Alexei Linov, and Leona Snido, and it successfully landed near the alien spacecraft. The team entered the ship, examined its interior and the bodies of the pilots, and even purportedly took the head of one of the bodies. The alien spacecraft was said to be 3 km long and half km wide in size, and approximately 1.5 million years old. The interior of the ship reportedly contained many signs of biological life, including remnants of vegetation in the engine compartment, triangular stones exuding a yellow liquid with medicinal properties and remains of small bodies that lived in a network of glass spikes throughout the vessel. They also found a humanoid female measuring 1.65 meters with hair and six fingers. The female appeared to have been a pilot with an aerobatics device connected to her fingers and eyes. Astronaut Lenov removed the device from her eyes, causing blood clots or biofluids to burst and freeze in her mouth, nose, eyes and parts of her body. Some parts of her body were well preserved with a thin transparent layer of protection covering her hair and skin. Her condition was described as neither dead nor alive, but the question was whom this spaceship could belong to. Edwin E. Aldrin, the second person to walk on the moon, claimed that he saw aliens while he was there. Aldrin later took a lie detector test, which he passed. The astronaut described seeing an unidentified object moving outside of the Apollo 11 spacecraft. 
According to him, the spaceships were far superior in size and technology. According to American ufologist Vladimir Azaza, Buzz Aldrin said to Mission Control that two large unknown objects were watching them. This message was never heard by the public because NASA censored it. According to other ufologists, Aldrin made a color film of the UFO from inside the ship and continued filming them even when they were out. In later interviews, Aldrin confirmed that the story was true, but refused to give more details. According to many other sources, aliens have a base on the moon and told astronauts in no uncertain terms to get off and stay off the moon. So let me know what's your views on these claims. If you want to see more such videos, then hit the subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.